Today I want to talk to you guys about 10 common mistakes that Subaru owners make. These are things that you may encounter as you're driving your Subaru, different settings that you may inadvertently adjust. So I'm going to show you how you might encounter those and how to avoid making those mistakes. If you are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos all on Subaru related topics. So if you think you might enjoy those kinds of videos, consider clicking that subscribe button down below. And as always, if you guys have any questions about any of the information I share in this video, leave comments below and I'll do my best to answer those for you. The first mistake you might make is by inadvertently locking your steering wheel. So I'll show you what this looks like. So if you get in your car and maybe you're either getting in your car or getting out of your car and trying to use the steering wheel as leverage or a handle to get in and out, you might accidentally lock your steering wheel. So if you turn it too far to the right or the left, it will lock the steering wheel. So the issue is, whenever you go to try to start the car. So you stick the key in the ignition, you try to start it and it won't start. That's because the steering wheel is locked. So to release the steering wheel lock, you're going to turn it clockwise, putting pressure on it and simultaneously put your key in the ignition just like that and that will release it. The good news is the majority of Subarus now come with the keyless entry with push button start and it appears that this wheel locking feature so you can still lock the wheel but you don't have to worry about applying pressure to the steering wheel to release it. You just simply put your foot on the brake, put your foot on the push button start and it will fire right up without any issues with the wheel lock. But if you do have a Subaru with the previous style ignition key where you actually have to stick it in the ignition then at least now you know how to release the wheel lock if it ever gets jammed up on you. The Subaru keyless entry key fob is really convenient because instead of having to click the lock or the unlock whenever you want to get in or out of your car, you can just approach the car with your key in your pocket, you pull on the handle, the door automatically unlocks. Now, to lock the door, you simply put your fingers right here on the groove. Now, this is where the mistake comes into play. A lot of people, because of the design of this particular handle, now not all Subarus are this way, I'll show you a different one here in a second, but because of the design of this, they go reach on the handle to put their thumb here to lock the door, but they might simultaneously actually unlock it. So the car is left unlocked unknowingly. In order to avoid that, just simply use your pointer finger here and go to the side. So that is how you lock it, just by putting your finger right there on the grooves. As a point of comparison, I think they redesigned the handle on the Outback a lot better. And so you'll notice there's no little grooves right here. Instead, they are on the top or on the bottom. So works the same way. The grooves are just in a different position. So you can tap the top or tap the bottom to lock the door and then to unlock same thing, put your hand on the inside of the handle. So we know how the keyless entry works with locking and unlocking, but what happens if you want to lock your key inside your car? Maybe you are going kayaking, you don't want the key getting wet or damaged, so you want to lock it in here, come back later for it, and you want to be able to regain access. Or you're going to dinner, maybe your spouse is leaving their purse behind. That actually happened to us. My wife left her purse in here. We thought we locked it, but it didn't, and I'll show you how this happened. So you click on here. You hear a beep, but it's a continuous beep. Well, we didn't pay attention. The car, we actually came back to find out the car was still unlocked. Luckily, nothing was stolen, but that is a common mistake. Even I myself have made in the past, but now I know how to lock the key inside. Now, if you have your second key with you, which we did that evening, you just simply click the lock on the key fob that will lock it inside. But say you're going kayaking and you wanna lock the key fob in the car, you're not gonna have a spare on you. The way you do that is by putting the key in sleep mode. It's really easy to put the key in sleep mode, but before you do this and lock your key inside, either grab this spare key right here to gain access to the door or set your secret pin code back here on the tailgate. So not a lot of people know that this little button is associated with the locking and unlocking. And you can set a secret pin code. If you wanna see a detailed video on how to do this and how it works, click on the YouTube card above to the right. That will share more detail. But assuming you have your pin code set or you have this key to regain access, to lock the key inside the car, we have to put it in sleep mode. So we're going to click the lock button and simultaneously double click the Subaru Star Cluster logo. I'm gonna to try to do this one with one hand here. So click the lock double click the unlock you'll see the light flash four times consecutively then when we go to lock it it's actually going to allow us to do so now i have the spare key on me so i can simply tap right here and it'll lock otherwise you can just click the lock button here on the inside of the door before you close it and that will stay locked but again you have to have your key to gain access to the driver's side door or have that pin code already saved and set to get in 
through the hatch. The next common mistake that I see new Subaru owners make is with their power liftgate operation. They might call me and say, hey, my liftgate's not working. I click the button, but nothing is happening. So you click the liftgate button right here, it just beeps, it doesn't do anything. Or you go on the inside of the dash here, on the left-hand side of the dash, you click this button, and still nothing, it's not opening. Well, the reason why is because you have to click and hold either one of those buttons to open and close. So I'll show you what it looks like with the key fob. So you click and hold this button right here. It will open it up all the way, or if you click and hold it again, it will close it. So that is how you operate your power lift gate. Another issue you may encounter is with the power lift gate not going up all the way. Now this is more common on the Subaru Forester, and that is because the Subarus with the power lift gates have a memory height setting. And with the Forester specifically, this is gonna be changing for the 25 model year, but at least as it stands right now, the button to turn this memory height setting on and off is right here. So you can see right now, it is pressed in, we'll unclick that, and now it will go up all the way whenever we operate that power lift gate button. So here we go, we'll go ahead and close this. And when we open it back up, you will see that it will go up all of the way. Now the reason why there is a quick way to turn on and off that memory height setting is because if you have kayaks on top, you don't want this going up all the way because that will likely clip the edge of the kayak and cause damage to your rear gate. For the Outback or any of the newer Subarus that now share this same 11.6 inch touchscreen display, you can adjust your memory height setting by going into the settings right here, scroll over to where it says car, and then at the bottom, click on power rear gate. Just tap that on right there when it's lit up blue, then you can go around to the back of the car, open the lift gate up, and then you can manually move this wherever you want. Once you find it in the position that you like, probably a good idea to look from the side to make sure the spoiler is not sticking out too high. And then click on, click and hold this button on the right. You'll hear it beep and then you'll know that your power lift gate memory height is set. Resetting the memory height position on your rear gate for a Forester is the exact same, but you have a physical button as we just saw. So you click that button in, you go to the back of the tailgate, open it up and then manually move it where you want. Click and hold that button until it beeps and then you have a new position set. If you have a Subaru Outback, you may have heard that there's a hands-free option to open your power lift gate without touching any buttons. And the way this works is that whenever you have your key fob on you in your pocket nearby, you walk up to the car and you hold your hand out inches away from the Star Cluster logo, the power lift gate is supposed to open. Well, in this case, we see it's not operating. Well, why is that? So if you go around to the front of the car on the left-hand side of the dash, make sure that that sensor is not turned off. So we see that it's pressed in, that means it's turned off. So we're going to unpress that button. We're gonna go back to the rear of the car. Remember, you have to have your key in your pocket and that sensor needs to be turned on. We go right here, put our hand there and it'll open up. So this is really handy if you are carrying larger items like grocery bags to the car and you're trying to open it without pressing any buttons or without having to get the key out of your pocket. The next common mistake that people oftentimes make is with your lane departure controls or at least getting them confused. So on your steering wheel here, you'll see a button with a steering wheel on it. So a lot of people think that this will turn on and off the lane departure alert, the beeping noise it makes whenever you get too close to the left or the right side of the lane, but that's not the case. This just turns on the lane centering, which actually guides you left and right, keeping you centered in your lane. Now, if you want to be able to turn off the alert, the beeping noise it makes, go into your car settings, and I'm gonna show you this next in the Forester, but for all the Subarus that have this new display, we're gonna go into the car settings on the bottom left of the screen, under driving assistance, we'll go to lane departure, and make sure that the buzzer is turned off. So we'll turn it off just like that. And that will keep it from beeping whenever you go outside of your lane. Now, a lot of people like that safety feature. So if you do want it on, just turn it back on just like that. Now we're in the Forester and you'll notice it has the same layout on the steering wheel. You have this steering wheel button that controls your lane centering. So keeping you centered in your lane when you're driving. But if you want that audible tone on or off, right now it's actually on. If you wanna turn it off, it's not in the touchscreen display. It's much easier. It's up here near the dome light. You click and hold this for just a few seconds. 
you'll hear it beep. And then if you look down here on the dash, you'll see that now it says that your lane departure alert is turned off. And if you ever wanna turn it back on, you just simply click and hold for a few seconds. You hear it beep, and now that off light went away because it is now on. Since we're talking about some of the controls near the dome light, I'll go ahead and show you this. So you can tap to turn on your dome lights in your Subaru, but something that is even easier, if you want those to automatically turn on, make sure that you switch this over to the door setting. And that way, whenever you open your door, those dome lights will automatically turn on. When you close your door, those dome lights will gradually automatically turn off just like that. If you drive across toll bridges or highways where you're going to need a transponder, a lot of those transponder companies will recommend putting your transponder in the center of the windshield up by the rear view mirror. But with Subarus, they have cameras up here, two and oftentimes three cameras that look for objects out ahead and detect for cyclists, pedestrians, cars to operate the emergency automatic braking system or your adaptive cruise control. If that interferes, if anything's on the windshield, that could interfere with it and turn it off. And it'll tell you on the dash if it's turned off. It'll say eyesight off or something of that nature. What I do with my transponder is I either put it up here in the top left or the top right of the windshield in the far corner. I haven't personally had mine interfere with that and I cross the toll bridge almost every single day. A common point of confusion and a mistake oftentimes new Subaru owners make is how to connect your phone and mirror the maps up on the display. So a lot of people are familiar with Bluetooth because that allows you to wirelessly make phone calls and also listen to music. But what a lot of the modern cars have now, Subaru included, have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which allows you to mirror your navigation and other apps up on the display. And so if you click on this, if you don't see Apple CarPlay here, then click on the add device icon on the bottom, click on your device, and then talk on Apple CarPlay. So it'll take you just a moment here to load up and reconnect, but now it is connected and the Apple CarPlay setting has activated. And this now gives you access to go in to utilize other apps like phone, text, and music. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found value in it. If you did, please remember to click the like button. That helps me out a ton and I would really appreciate it. Hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one.